Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum! Last time, we returned here to Jubilife City, battled against Team Galactic for the very first time as they were blocking the way out of town. And we also visited some new locales like Jubilife TV where we got some cool new stuff, and the Global Terminal where we listened to some cool music because that place isn't really good for anything else anymore. But, this time, with the way open, we are heading out to the north of town, which is why I'm running in the exact opposite direction, yeah. I was told by you guys that right around here there is, yes, a Stardust! This is an item meant for selling at the Pokemart, but I don't really need to sell it right now. I just kind of wanted to show that that's there because I didn't know about it, so thank you for telling me about it. Also, while doing that intro, I realized how pretty this fountain is. Just kind of another example of this game's art style being really appealing to me. I mean, some people say that it's Game Boy Advance in pop-up book form and that it's bland, but I don't think that's bland. I think it's really creative. I thought this was a great direction to take the series in. And I really do like Colosseum, but I feel like if they went for that style on the DS, it would have just looked sloppy. This looks nice. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and use a repel right here, and I gotta say, it's kind of funny how Looker left town, like, what, eight minutes before the bad guys attack Jubilife, and he's supposed to be, like, a special, like, sleuth or something like that. I mean, he's just kind of like, ah, oh, there's no bad guys here. I know there's no trouble brewing. I've been here long enough. <laughs> All right, so Ravage Path. We can now move onward because we have Rock Smash. I'm gonna go off onto this other pathway. Not Tombstoner, but TM39 Rock Tomb, yeah. This is one of the, I guess, better rock type moves we have as of right now. It's powerful compared to what we've seen so far, and it can lower the enemy's speed, but it's kind of inaccurate, and there's definitely better options for rock type moves later on. I mean, well, okay, maybe I should see if I can learn it, because it might be helpful on, say, Bodhi, because he's, you know, not the fastest and weak to flying type, so maybe I could try that. Also weak to bug type. Uh, no, nothing. Well, it was worth a shot. Bodhi with his bu uh, bug type, with his ground type lineage, I was kind of hoping maybe he could. Let's go to this cave exit right here, and great second dungeon, guys, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is with early caves in Sinnoh being so tiny, but trust me on that, that's not going to last. Really, did not want to go back in there. Freaking D-pad screwing up on me. Yeah, that is not going to last, but for now it is kind of humorous. Are you raising different kinds of Pokemon? If you only have the same type of Pokemon, you'll have a hard time against types it's weak to. It's part of the reason why I wanted to get Zubat. It quad resists poison, which is one of the types that Bodhi would have problems with. And on top of that, it's also immune to the poison status because it is a poison type itself. Right there we get Awakening, that'll cure sleep. Um, you are looking away. Okay, I don't want to run when I'm around you. Uh, I don't think I want to use a repel. Well, that was great. Um, if you're wondering, there aren't any sort of new encounters here. Even though you can kind of see this in the sidebar, um, a thing that Sinnoh does that I don't think had been done prior in the Pokemon series is that if, say, you have two ends of a route that are on the other opposite ends of a cave, oftentimes they will be counted as the same route. So even though we're in Northern Route 204 here, the encounters don't differ. There's not really anything special about it. It's just kind of, well, there. It's a neat way of doing things, and I do like how everything fits together, how you can see the cave entrance from one part of the route and then see the other one from another part of a route, but... Yeah, in a, any other game, I would assume that they would probably have made this a separate route and given it its own encounters, but not here. Get TM09 Bullet Seed, that's a physical grass type move that hits two to five times at random but has low attack power. I would teach that to Bodhi, but I think Razor Leaf is just stronger and much more reliable. With that, we have gotten to Floroma Town. Yeah, I like the pun too. I also like the peaceful atmosphere, it's nice. Do you know about Gracidia flowers? They're given as bouquets to express feelings of gratitude. It's an enduring tradition around these parts. I get the feeling you have an item for me, but you're holding out on me. Maybe we'll get to see what that's all about later. I wanted to get some flowers from the Floroma Meadow, but some Team Galactic guys in snazzy outfits came along. Well, fitting that like a little kid nerd wouldn't have the same fashion sense as a professor old man. So you're saying that they went across the meadow. We'll have to see what they're up to there. But first, more importantly, I want to kill some plants while I'm here in this hippie town, yeah. We get an Orinberry that'll restore 10 HP. We've heard about those before. It's a held item that you can use to auto restore HP whenever you get low on health. Cherry Berry cures paralysis. It's also a held item. Or a hold item, rather. It's not held by anything right now. Uh, berries you pick and be used as food for Pokemon. You can also trade them in at the florists. How about we try seeing that? They were saying that we can get some accessories to dress up our Pokemon, and we were doing that last time. Trainer, please water berries using this spray duck watering can. We get the Spray Duck, easily one of my favorite items in all of Pokemon. I know that it's the same function as the Whalebur Pail, so why would I like it anymore? Just look at that Sprite! Look at that! <laughs> I think the only way that it could be more perfect than it already is would be if it was like coming out of Psyduck's nostrils or something to water the flowers with its snot. I mean, 
From a design perspective, it makes sense why you'd have the holes drilled at the end of the build, but still. <laughs> I love that. That sprite is perfection. How is that not a more well-referenced thing? It's that good. Come on. It really is. You over here, um, she's telling us that you can plant a berry to grow into a plant that would give several berries. Uh, planting one of the more berries in the world. She will give you a random berry once a day. In this case, we got a Chesto berry that cures sleep, similar to the awakening that we just picked up. Hello, would you like to exchange your berries for some accessories? This right here is what we heard about before. If you want to make more interesting photographs, this is your primary way of getting different accessories for that feature in Jubilife TV. It seems simple enough, you can just exchange berries for items, but pretty quickly you're gonna see that this is getting out of hand. Yeah, 10 of these berries, 50 of those, 100! And Pam Tree Berry is a really rare berry, as is, like, a lot of these are rare, like... I think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone other than me that's actually 100 percent at this aspect of the game where they bought every one of those items. I've done it, but I do not feel good about doing it. I just feel like I wasted hundreds of hours of my life. Because that takes a lot of time to get them. You can plant berries in the soil. I think I'm just gonna complete the circle of life and plant the ones that were originally here. We'll put the cherry berry back where we found it. And you're gonna use the spray duck to sprinkle water on this. Now, every few hours in real time, the soil is going to dry out, so you gotta keep checking in on it. This can get really out of hand if you plant a lot of berries and just simply forget about them. You will get more berries for planting them whenever they need it. The soil will kind of have like a tan color to it, so just keep on top of that. I'm gonna plant these here. I still can't believe that in my Emerald Let's Play, I actually said that planting berries was something I wasn't going to do because it's overpowered. You get so many items from it, and you just simply don't even like need to buy a lot of items in Marts anymore if you do that. So yeah, I'm gonna be abusing berries heavily in this series. Now, these guys with those haircuts, Army Team Galactic, and we're assigned here, standing among flowers. That doesn't seem cool, a lot cool. Hey now, don't complain. This is a pretty decent assignment. But bug and grass type Pokemon creep me out. I don't like being here either. What's the matter? Are you afraid those grass type Pokemon are gonna throw leaves at you or something? Well, you should, because Bodhi is gonna do that next time I get a chance to fight you goons. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk to you, actually. There's a little bit of history about this town that we can find out. So it's a town of flowers, flowers, and more flowers. You should plant some flowers of your own, too. Yay for flowers! I kind of planted something, but it was only after I killed something like an evil corporation that, like, plants a tree for everyone that they kill. I'm just gonna stop now. Looking for a quick out. Uh, honey available! That'll work! That is some really awkward wording, and I love it. But, more importantly, as we head through this gate they rendered specially for us Platinum players, I want you to listen to this song. I love the intro to this song, it just sounds so adventurous, it's one of my favorite root themes in all of Pokemon, and say what you will about the town themes and Sinnoh being bland, what Sinnoh doesn't have in town themes, it more than makes up for in root themes, and battle themes too. What do you have to say little girl, also that peach of berry restores poison. Help, help trainer, please I want to see my papa! Okay, I won't make you listen to that voice, I'm sorry I subjected it to you for even the few seconds that I did. My papa and I lived at Valley Windworks. So you lived in a power plant? I'm so sorry. But then a whole bunch of people came like, dressed like spacemen came up. They kicked me out, and they're making my papa do something. Please, trainer, I miss my papa. Well, we will help her out after we check up here. We can't go to the north in Route 205, and it doesn't have any new encounters anyway, so there's really no point in us going onward. Um, besides, not like we could anyway. Uh, stealing Valley Windworks, but it's no concern of you, so you stole a power plant. That's got to be a first in the history of the world. I wonder if that's ever happened in real life. I'm sure it has. Let's get this. We get a potion. It can definitely be helpful. And there are some new encounters here at Valley Windworks that are separate from Route 205, but I think we're gonna wait to go over those just because we have a lot of stuff going on right here in the moment. Don't dare go into the Valley Windworks. It's not like I could. I mean, your sprite's kind of immovable. I got, I got order to keep everyone out if they're not part of Team Galactic. You're giving me a look that makes me think you're gonna try to get in. Okay then, you'll have to battle me for it. You think you would've learned from your fellow grunts that were standing guard over on the bridge that if you just don't battle me, I can't possibly move you or ever get past you? Just saying, might be some good advice. And ugh, another good meow. Uh, well. I guess now could be the time that we try to use out but Try to use out, no, try- Try to use bite. You was out? I don't know. So we're gonna confuse you first. I wanna use that attack stat against you because I think you got a pretty respectable one, at least for low levels. Do bite. This is a dark, dark type move that has a chance of inflicting flinch. It's basically just a better astonish, if you ask me. I don't really know why they made Zubat learn both moves one after another. I mean, yeah, Ghost and Dark are slightly different types, but not by much. They're probably the two most similar Pokemon types to each other. I mean, 
Defensively and offensively, they are near identical. It's to the point where you kind of wonder why they haven't redone them on the type chart at this point. Uh, oh, um, well, good thing I have sleep recovery items. That would be really bad if I didn't. Also, you didn't try using it again. Bodhi, please make quick work of this thing. I really do not want to have a long battle where you're using Growl to lower my attack so I can't really damage you much and just using Hypnos. Okay, good. You're missing on that even more. Gotta say, I've been getting lucky with the accuracy of moves. A lot of my opponent's moves are missing a lot and Zubat with that supersonic, that's a 55% accurate move and you wouldn't even know it from just watching it use it. It's been just that accurate with it. Take you out. Yeah, like I'm really supposed to win with a Pokemon like this. Sick burn on your unconscious glow meow that probably can't hear you. Isn't that just great? Getting owned by some kid. You can't do a thing if I lock myself in with the works. See, I also couldn't do a thing if you just didn't fight me, but hey, I guess this way I got stronger and thus it makes me it easier for me to beat you. Yeah, flock from the inside, so we can't do anything about that. I guess we'll just have to give up and go home. And by home, I mean Floroma Town, because there's not really any way that we could get home from here. Well, we could get home from here, it would just take quite a while, and it'd be kind of pointless when I could just heal at the Pokemon Center instead of healing at my house. Speaking of which, we have yet to go to the Pokemon Center in this town, and we want to do that. I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you lose a battle, you respawn at the last Pokemon Center that you heal at. So doing this first thing when you get to a town is always a good idea, just in case. Unless you're a speedrunner, in which case it's a horrible time waster that wastes somewhere in the ballpark of a few thousand frames. <laughs> What do you have to say, actually? I haven't talked to you before. Powers the electric power lately. There's some trouble at Valley Windworks. Yeah, there is. Nothing you need to concern yourselves with, though. Team Galactic told me so. It's all good. <laughs> so we're gonna head back to that meadow up here. And when you know it, those galactic goons that were standing in the way, I always like using goons for some reason. Uh, yeah, they're no longer standing there. Enough arguing, hand over that sweet honey. Here it comes, the famous line. Do as we say, Team Galactic will have that honey. Don't you mean that we must have it to attract Pokemon in great numbers? Yeah. You knew it was coming. That is just such a classic moment that everybody quotes. So this kid is a witness, what'll we do? We don't need the brat running off to get help. The solution's simple, we ensure the brat stays quiet. So, while we were in these two battles, since this is gonna take a little bit longer, I think now we could go over those two encounters that we had over on Route 205. I know it's a bit of a weird timing to do it, but I kinda thought it was the best way of doing things just cause I wanted to show off Zubat's new moves and all that. First off is Bweasel. If you're looking for the traditional bulky water type Pokemon with high special attack, you're not gonna find it here. Also, I like as soon as I praise Zubat for hitting with Supersonic all the time, it missed right there. Anyway, Weasel. It is a fast water type that focuses on physical damage, something that would have never flown in previous generations. Or swam in its case, maybe breached if you want to meet in the middle there. And Zubat has missed that thing three times now, jeez. And now I'm gonna hit my Fury Swipe, sorry. It's just really hard not getting distracted by that considering just how uncanny the timing is. Come on, Zubat, please do not go down on me right here. Pl you missed a four! Four! Well, I guess I'm getting the hell out of dodge right now. So much for thinking that Zubat can handle this. Anyway, Bweasel! It has decent stats for sweeping. It's definitely not a weak Pokemon, but most of the moves it gets leveling up are water and normal type. So if you want more diversity, you might need to go with TMs. Other than that, it's a good sweeper of a type that you don't typically see as a sweeper. The second of the two, hopefully with 100% less interruption, thanks again Zubat, really appreciated that, is Shellos. If you are looking for a bulky water type Pokemon, you will find it here, and so much more. Shellos, when fully evolved, becomes a water ground type, only having one weakness, grass. In addition, it gets the moves Water Pulse and Mud Bomb almost immediately after you catch it. Those are powerful moves this early on, and they remain useful for quite some time. Believe it or not, it's so good that I recommend catching it now more than waiting for its evolution. Because its evolution has a harder time getting the moves Water Pulse and Mud Bomb, and you're still gonna be using them that much later. Honestly, if you want any sort of tanky Pokemon, Shellos is something very worth considering. I even considered using it on my team for a while, and I just barely decided that I didn't want to go for it, but that's not to say that it's bad at all. It's very good. So, I don't know if you were watching that battle up in the corner, but I'm in trouble. That Stunky was really strong. Like, that was, it was using Screech, it was using Focus Energy to up its critical hit chance, it was getting criticals, it was using Fury Swipes after lowering my defense multiple times, and on top of that, it also poisoned Bodhi, so, this is gonna be an interesting battle. And it just got even more interesting because I'm fighting Zubats. Um, I think it would be wise for me to heal. I bought these, uh, I wanna use a super potion here. No, I'll use a regular old potion. Besides, 
I'm fighting a level 11 Zubat. I know well better than anyone else that I don't have to worry about it one-shotting anything. Store our HP and then see what we can do here. Okay, good. Leech life. I quad resist that. Good. Keep doing stuff like that. That's what I want to see. He's going to do one. Yeah, it does one. When you do one damage to a Zubat, you know it is not your day. I think I'm just going to forgo confusing it because it really didn't work out for me all that well last time. And just go for the bite there. I should be able to three hit KO it. It's going to feel so good when I can two hit stuff. At least bite is more respectable than what I had, even if it is redundant with Astonish. And the beauty of this is, even though I'm fighting a Zubat that probably does no Astonish, that I was going to say I don't have to worry about it flinching me because I go first and you can only flinch within the same turn, but has to go and confuse me. Please don't hit yourself, Zubat. I really need you to... Okay, good. Making up for that, I see. Making up for your bad use as a Supersonic by being good against Supersonic. It's like theming. I don't want to throw a Turtwig out against the Zubat. That would just be... I don't know. It's strongest way of attacking me would probably be Leech Life, so maybe I don't really have to worry that much, but still, Turtwig is not in the best shape of its life. I'll just say that much. <laughs> do your Leech Life. Absorb my health. Do whatever you gotta do. You know, this guy really should have... I'm not really sure, like, I feel like the other guy should have come second, because he was clearly the stronger of the two. That Stunky was no joke. I am honestly really surprised that a Stunky was that dangerous, so let it be known, Stunky can be really good in low levels. Come on, Z Zubat! I don't want to use another potion, but I also don't want your happiness to go down either. Putting me in tight situations here. I'm metagaming and you're making it hard. Um... Uh... No, no, I shouldn't. I'll go into my potions. Uh, no, no, no! I can't even use a potion right this battle! Thank you. Now, what are you gonna do? You're gonna. Okay, good. I can live with that. I can live with three damage. Now, use but. Would have snapped out of confusion anyway, so I really didn't need to use that. Now, can you. No flinches, no critic. Sorry if I'm sounding like I'm whining a lot though, but this is proving to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I mean, this isn't really a battle that I remember for its difficulty, I'm just saying. Get our experience and you are down too. I want a promotion so I can get some tougher Pokemon. We ain't gonna get promoted by getting your ass beat by a child. Yeah, I said it. This brat's tough, like really, really tough. Tougher than I could put into words, and I know a lot of words. We're done. We're we're blah, 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 blah. we're done for. We're done for here. Um, that sounds really bad. So they're just retreating to the Valley Windworks somehow without the works key. I guess they can knock and that guy will let him in. Should have thought of trying that back when I was in there. You get the works key. The go goons were trying to rob me of my sweet sweet honey. They were weird though. You saw how they were dressed. What the, what they were saying didn't make a whole lot of sense either. Oh, I need to thank you. This sweet sweet honey. Go on, take a whole lot. We get the honey. Slather the honey on sweet smelling tree, it might attract Pokemon. So by a whole lot of honey, how much are we talking here? We are talking 10. Wow, I was about to make fun of the fact that I think we only actually get one, but that man wasn't whistling Dixie, he's a man of his word. Also, I'm poisoned, you can see my HP going down in the corner. We'll deal with that in just a moment. Oh. So you can slather this onto, onto a tree. Um, after a few hours of real time have passed, Pokemon can appear on them. You'll know they are because the tree will be shaking, and there are some Pokemon you can only encounter in this way. There's quite a few of them, though, so I think we'll go over them another time. I think for now, I'll just slather that on there, and we'll deal with it a little bit later. I'll go into this house. Uh, I think these guys just simply tell us about how honey works. Yeah, it's quite often you can find some rare Pokemon that way. This was oddly a mechanic that they wanted to introduce as early as Gen 2, according to some unused text, but it finally came to fruition here! Get it? Fruition? Curious? <laughs> what? Oh! But he survived the poison and then the poison faded away. Yeah, just like I was saying earlier, um, if poison... At least I think I said it earlier back when we had the trainer school. If you have one HP and poison in this game in the field, the Pokemon does not faint. It just goes away. Uh, this guy will let you buy some more honey if you are so inclined, but we have ten of them. I don't really think that we need to. I think for now, I'm just gonna slather honey on some other trees, in addition to planting some more berries. You know, gotta get into this hippie lifestyle. We're in a flowery town with these wooden overarching signs and a wind power plant and all that, you gotta get into the atmosphere. Anyway though, I think with all that done, since we have gotten the honey, we have stopped Team Galactic and Floroma Town at least, and we got the works key, we can now move on to the Valley Windworks. I think we're gonna end things off here. I mean, I'm sure that guy who's held hostage, he can wait a little longer for me to rescue him, and 
That girl, she was probably long traumatized by having her dad held hostage by some criminals before we even arrived in town. She can wait a little bit longer, right? Right. Anyway, next time on Pokemon Platinum, we head on into the Valley Windworks and hopefully see some progress on our berry plants and our honey trees. See you guys then.